Okay. Welcome to your ninth session. Um, please also remember to complete the register. I've posted the link in the chat. And then we can start with today's session. Today we're doing sampling distribution and the following two weeks I am thinking and contemplating because we are way ahead of almost where you need to be in terms of all your modules like 1501, 1610 and 1501. I'm thinking maybe we need to take a break um, if it's possible to cancel those two last session and we will resume again in July. Why I'm saying that it, it's not it's, it's no good use if you are still busy with your assignments and your assignments are not even yet at this at this point where we are discussing because then by the time you start doing the work related to this two um, session confidence interval and hypothesis testing it will be sometime somewhere in, in August so if um but you can post in the chat or we can discuss when we get to the question and answer session just now let me know what your feeling is so that we don't start on those two sessions we we waive at them until july and then we can start properly in july um, with confidence interval and hypothesis testing okay so today we're going to deal with sampling distribution. Are there any questions or query or comments before we start with the session for today? Based on what I just said, do you guys feel you want to yeah, the next two weeks, or can we waiver them and start in July, the sessions? Are you good? Are you happy with the suggestion? Okay, yeah. thank you. I will inform you, Nisa, as such. Okay, so... I'm going to share my entire screen for this purpose because we're going to be using the table. I hope you have your tables with you. So for today's session, you need your statistical tables. We're still going to rely on the formulas to calculate and we need the calculator. So by the end of the session today, you will learn how to compute uh, probabilities from a sampling distribution and we're going to look at how to find the probability of Z less than, Z greater than a value, or Z lies between two values. We're going to also calculate the mean and the standard deviation of a sampling distribution, which is called also the standard error. But also we're going to rely mostly on the Z table that we used the last time you remember when we were doing the normal distribution the z table that we used to do um, for the normal distribution we're going to use it today because sampling distribution as well we are trying to normalize a uniform distribution and making it a standardized normal distribution table uh, 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 data so what are the things that you need to know since I told you um, with sampling distribution, 
we're working with multiple samples. With normal distribution, we're working with only one population. Yeah, we're working with one population, but multiple samples taken from that sum, from that population. And once we have those multiple samples, we calculate the average of each of those samples, and then we calculate the average of this all the samples, uh, the sample means, and that will give us the sampling distribution mean, which it is denoted by mean of X bar, mean subscript X bar will just be the same as your mean of your population. They are, they will most likely to be equal. The standard deviation, however, on the other side, the standard deviation of a sampling distribution will be calculated by using the population standard deviation divided by the square root of your sample size. And this is also referred to not only as the standard deviation of a sampling distribution of mean, but it is also referred to as the standard error. So if they ask you to calculate the standard error, they are asking you to find the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Either, later on, we will introduce for the proportion. So here we're talking about the uh, standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the means. <clears throat> Let's look at an example of how we will calculate them. Suppose a population has the mean of eight and the standard deviation of uh, population standard deviation of three. Suppose that a random sample size n of 36 is selected. Calculate the mean of the sampling distribution. So what they are asking you to find is the mean of the sampling distribution. And we know that the mean of the sampling distribution is the same as the population mean. So therefore, our mean of a sampling distribution will be equals to eight. Question number two asks, calculate the standard deviation of a sampling distribution. We know that the standard deviation of a sampling distribution is given by the population standard deviation divided by the square root of your n, which is also referred to as, you remember, this is so referred to as the standard, the standard error. Our population standard deviation is 3. Our n square root of 36, which will be 3 divided by what is the square root of 36 is 6, which is 1 over 2, or we can say it's 0 0.5. And that's how you will find the mean and the standard deviation of a sampling distribution of means. And how will I identify that this is what I need to be calculating? Is this the standard distribution of means? It's because they will give you the mean and the standard deviation. And you will see when we talk about the proportion, you will get the proportion or you will get the values that associate with the, uh, pro uh, the, the sample. Okay. You are also expected to know how to find the probability of a sampling distribution. So to find the probability of a sampling distribution of means, we use the Z-score. Remember, in normal distribution, our Z-score was your X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. This is to find the probability we use Z score to find the probability of a normal distribution. Probability distribution. To find the probability of a sampling distribution, we use the Z score, but the formula then changes too because now we have the means and the standard error and the population's 
uh, means. So the formula is the sample means minus the population than a population means or population of of sampled means divide by the standard deviations of sampled means which is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the mean and the mean of a sampling distribution of the means which is also given by the sample mean minus the mean population mean divide by the standard error, which is the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So you just need to remember this formula. Suppose a population has the mean of eight and the standard deviation of three. Suppose a random sample size of n is selected. What is the probability that the sample mean is between 7.8 and 8.5? You can calculate the two z values, or you can say this they are asking us to find the probability that the sample mean lies between, I'm just going to put the between 7.8 and 8.2. Therefore, they are asking us to find the probability I'm going to write the formulas of the sample means minus the population sampled means, but now because we know that it's the same as the population mean, the standard error, which is the standard deviation divided by the square root of n, and this is our z, lies between the two values. And I'm going to write the formula again on this side for the same thing. And I'm going to substitute now going back already. Our values are highlighted, so it makes it easier. So to find the probability that Z lies between the first one, we're going to calculate for the 78, 7.8. So 7.8 minus our population mean is 8. Divide by the standard deviation which is 3 over the square root of 36. And therefore it means I must expand my bracket. And the same, 8.2 minus the mean, which is 8, divided by standard Deviation of 3 divided by the square root of 36 and close the bracket. And that's then you just calculate the values. I've got a solution already. Then we know that from the left hand side, 7.8 minus 8 divided by 3 divided by the square root of 36 will give us 0 minus 0, 0,4. Uh, Eight point two minus eight divided by three divided by the square root of thirty six gives us zero point zero point four. This is between. We know with the between the probability of Z lies between the value of A and B. We know that we're going to find it by using the probability of Z less than B minus the probability of z less than a because those are the values we can find on the probability table then we go and find this value on the table and subtract this value from the table so let's go to the table and go and see if we can find minus 0 0.4 and 0 0.4 remember it's the same the same thing Z cumulative standardized normal distribution table, which has the positive Z values and the negative Z values. Now we're looking for minus 0 0.4. So it means we need to go down to the minus 0 0.4 and minus 0 0.4 here. Yeah. And we need to go to the top because we need to just add 
another zero there. Remember, we need to keep two decimals. So our next column is just the first column, and the answer we get is 0, 0,03446, and we go to the positive side, and we go find 0, 0,4 and 0 will give us 0, 0,6554. Going back. We know that from the positive side, we got 0, 0,6554. From the negative side, we got 0, 0,3446. And we subtract one from the other, and we get the probability of between 7.8 and 8.2 to be 0, 0,3108. So we took our population distribution, we did a sampling distribution of it to convert or standardize it into a normally distributed population. And that is how you will answer the question as well when you get them from your assignment or your exam. So you can be asked as well to find the probability of A less than. You know that when we find the probability of Z less than a value, that will be the value we find on the table. If we find the probability of Z great, greater than a value, remember it's one minus the probability of Z less than a value that will be on the table. Okay. So let's do an Hello, example. Sister. Yes. How are, you? How are you? I'm good, thanks, Justice. I'm fine. fine. The table I see in next to me here is the standard normal distance. Can I look on it or they are the names for because they are the four different tables? No, the table is called standardized normal distribution. Let's go to Under see. normal distribution. Yeah, so you must look for a table named cumulative standardized normal distribution table. On on in your module, you have two tables, so you just need to find the one that looks like this. That will also re, uh, it's written it represent cumulative standardized normal distribution values. So it should have those kind of information, but your table needs to have negative distributions and positive distribution. If it's written standard, standard, if it's written like this without, without the other words, it's not the one that you need to be using. You need to look, look for the exact table. Are, yes. you, are you using your standard, your, your study guide? Yes, if you're using your study guide, you need to go to sampling distributions. And in there, probably the tables are somewhere in between. Go to the section where it it deals with sampling distribution. Those okay. who are giving fifteen oh one, fifteen oh one, please help Justice. Where while type in the oh Justice can't see the chat, but. Let us know if which uh, if you're using a study guide, uh, what page number, and if you're not using a study guide, where can he find the table? Okay, okay. Okay, so Let's do an exercise. Suppose Africa Check conducted further research using a sample size of 100. The number of times an AI algorithm is successful at detecting fake news is normally distributed with a different mean of 900 and the same standard deviation of 100. Let X be the number of times the algorithm is successful at detecting fake news. 
what is it that we are given and what is it that they are asking us to do? So the question is, find the probability of X less than 920. They have given us the sampling, the sample size, which is N of 100. They have given us the mean, which is 900. They have given us the standard deviation, which is 100, and they gave us the sample mean, which is 920. So let's go and find the probability. So the probability that Z lies between X, X bar minus mu divided by sigma divided by the square root of N. Substitute and calculate. I'm going to give you some few minutes. Those with no tables, do the calculations. When you are done, ask me to get to the table and tell me whether you want to be on the positive side or the negative side so that I can I can navigate the screen for you. Let's see if I can also get a calculator. Okay. Are we done? Let's see before I go to the table. P Z of less than our pop our mean sample mean is 920 minus our population mean is 900 divided by our Standard deviation is 100 divided by the square root of 100 
and what do you get? What is the answer that you get? To my screen and get the calculator. I'm going to use. Okay, we have 920. 920. Okay, I don't know why is my calculator acting up. Minus 900. I'll go to the bottom and I add again another fraction. Um, it's 100. Now, square root of again 100. And the answer we get is 2, so it's 2,00. It's positive 2,00. Happy? Are we good? Uh, Justice, uh, they say on your study guide, you must go to page. Let's go. Opening up today. I don't know why is my screen acting up. Maybe I need to restart my. Uh, they say you must go to page uh, 770 to 770. Uh, 771. That's where you will find the table. 77? Seven, seven. 770 and 771. Okay, so we're going to look at the table. It's positive, so we go to the positive side. We're looking for 2.2. 0 and 0 at the top, 2.0 and 0 at the top, and the answer is 0 0.9772. And the answer is 0 0.97. Seven two, and that's how you will find the probability. Any questions? <coughs> if there are no questions, then now I will give you time to do some exercises later on. Now let's look at sorry. Yes. Uh, can you please just elaborate how you come up on two point zero zero? Oh, we calculated that. I put it onto the calculator. Is my calculator not visible? I used this. So it's it's nine twenty minus nine hundred divided by hundred divided by the square root of Hundred, which gives me the answer of two. And because I know on the table we need to have two decimals, so two is the same as two comma zero zero, and that's how I got to to those two comma zero zeros. Okay, for some of us who are using financial calculator, I don't think I can. Okay, so if you're using a financial calculator, you can do the same because you just need to do it manually. So you will say 920 minus 900, right? And you will find the answer, which is 20, and you're just going to write your answer and say 
you PZ less than 20 divide by, and then you go to the bottom and calculate what is at the bottom. And then you go and say 100 divide by the square root. So on your financial calculator, you will press the square root. Where is your square root on the financial calculator? It is on button number three. So you will press shift, uh, second function. You will do second function and press button number three. So on my side, I have already the square root and you will press 100 once you've done that. And then you press equal and it will give you 10. So it will be 20 divided by 10. And we know what 20 divided by 10 is. It is the same as I remove this. Yeah. 20 divided by 10 will be Z of less than. You just say 20 divided by 10 equals 2. And you say, because I'm going to the table, I will need to find 0, 0. Okay. Oh, okay, thanks. Hmm. Now let's look at the population proportion. So with population proportion, it will be denoted by the pi. Um, don't get confused with what we already did some way where we were talking about the pi being the pop. Uh, the probability of success and probability of failure. So here we're talking about something. So the population proportion, and from now on going forward, you always need to remember that your population proportion, those who are doing 15 or 1, it will be different. So this is for those who are doing 15, 10, 16, 10. So the population proportion is denoted by pi. 1501, your population proportion is, divide, is denoted by a capital letter P. Going forward, when I talk about pi, you need to remember that it's a capital letter P. So we will use the population proportion uh, to calculate the mean of the population, which is the population proportion in a way. The Sample proportion, which sometimes they will not give it to you as the sample proportion, but they will give you observations satisfying the sample proportion. You need to be able to calculate it using the observation satisfying sample proportion divided by N. Those who are doing 1501, yours will be P guppy, P with a cap on top. 1501 and 1510, uh, and 1610, sorry, 1610 and 1510, yours will be P. 1501, it's P with a cap, it's P cap E. So if you're not given the sample proportion, you must know that you will need to calculate it by using X divided by N, which is something that we have been doing from basic probability, from discrete probabilities, uh, not, yes, from binomial probability, and from here. And always remember that your sample proportion should always be between 0 and 1. It can never be a value bigger than 0 and 1, or it can never be more than 0 percent, or sorry, it can never be less than 0 percent, or more than 100 percent. Similar to what we did when we were looking at the sampling distribution of means, with sampling distributions of proportions, our mean of the sampling distribution of proportion, it is your population proportion. So if they ask you to calculate the mean, you need to know that that is the same as your population proportion. The standard error or the sampling uh, 
standard deviation of a sampling distribution. It's calculated by the square root of your population proportion times one minus the population proportion divided by n. The standard error or the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of proportions is calculated by the square root of your population proportion times one minus the population proportion divided by n. Let's look at an example. Firstly, I don't have an example. I'll go straight to the exercise. From the past knowledge, Africa Checks knows that the true proportion of ghost profile on Facebook is 0 0.2. Suppose we take a sample of 200 Facebook profile and found only 34 to be ghost profiles. What is the value of the population proportion and the sample proportion? So yeah, we go back to our question. What is it that they have given us? They say from the past, they know that the true proportion of ghost profiles on Facebook is 0 0.2. So this should be our population proportion. So that is our population proportion pi. Suppose that we take a sample of 200. That should be our n. And found that on Facebook um, and find out only 34 to be ghost profile. And 34 is our X. Then I can come here and answer the question. What is my population proportion? I've identified it from the question or from the statement. It is 0 0.2. So therefore, this one is correct. That one is correct. It means these three statements are incorrect. What is my Sample proportion, they haven't given it to me, so I need to calculate it. So your P gap B is given by X divided by N. Your P or P gap B is given by that. So what is our X? X is 34. What is our N? N is 200. Because I've already identified them in the question, it makes it easy. So what is 34 divided by 200? is 17 divided by 2 by 100 and I can change it to a decimal because my answers here are decimals so that is 0 comma 17 0 comma 17 and the for the correct answer that is not correct so the correct answer is only number four and that's how you will answer the questions. Any question? None. Okay, so now let's look at how we calculate the probability. So with probability, we're also going to use the Z score. But yeah, the Z value for the proportion is given by your Sample proportion minus your population proportion divided by the square root of your population proportion divided uh, multiplied by one minus the population proportion divided by your n, or we can say is divided by the standard error. So you must also remember that everything underneath here, this is also what we call this standard standard error. The square root of pi times one minus pi divided by n is your standard error. <clears throat> so let's look at an example. If our population proportion is 0 0.4, our n, oh, going back to the formula, let's go back there one shot. This is for STA. 1610 STA 1510 for STA 
1501, you must know your formula is Z is equals to P ka P minus capital letter P divided by the square root of capital letter P times one minus capital letter P divided by N is the same. Okay, so you will use your formula because in my notes, I'm using the one with the pi and a P letter. So just be aware of that. Don't get confused. The principles are the same. If population proportion is 0 0.4 and our N is 200, what is the probability that P sample proportion lies between 0 0.4 and 0 0.45? The step I will do is to calculate the standard error because it's a very long calculation. So remember our formula, Z is equals to your P minus the population proportion divided by the population proportion 1 minus population proportion divided by N. So the first step I do, if I'm calculating everything manually, is to find my standard error, which I find, which is 0, 0,03464. So is to find the standard error. And once I have my standard error, then I can go and substitute into the formula to find my Z. So I know that uh, my P. Uh, sorry, yes. Sir, please. Yes. Uh, this uh, pi into one minus T, I, you say it's a standard error. No, no everything, this, is the standard error. All this uh, uh, formula. Yes, is to calculate your standard error or what we call the standard deviation of a sampling distribution of your proportion. Okay. Okay. And this Z score is, 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 is symbolizing the, the table. Yeah, there's Z. The Z score will be the value that we will use on the table after we have calculated all these values. Okay. So you substitute into this formula. So remember, Justice, your formula will be P B. So yours will be Z is equals to P B minus capital letter P divided by the square root of your P, 1 minus your P divided by A where this is your capital letter P, and this is your P P on your side, right? So okay. then we just do the substitution. So okay. 0 0.4 minus 0 0.4, because our sample is 0 0.4, our population is 0 0.4, divide by the standard error we just calculated, which is everything that is underneath the square root, this whole thing underneath the square root, and taking the square root underneath the division sign, we get 0, 0,3464. And on the right hand side, our sample is 0, 0,45. Our population is 0, 0.4 divided by the standard error. And the answer we get from solving all these fractions is on the left, we get 0. On the right, we get 1.44. Now, the next step, which is missing here, that you don't see, is that we went and we said P uh, Z of, we went and said Z of less than 1.44 minus Z of less than 0 0.00. Then we went to the table, the match, we can start with 1.44. So we went to the table, 1.4 and 4 at the top, where they meet, we found 0, 0.9251, which is the value that we found there. Then we went to the 0, 0, 0.00, which is also on the positive side, 0, 0, 0, 0.00 at the top, and the answer we get is 0, 0.05. And that is 0, 0,5000. And we subtract one from the other, 
and we get the probability that it lies between 0 0.4 and 4.5 to be 0 0.4251. So we have moved from a sampling distribution to a standardized normal distribution. Let's look at an example because I always like giving oh, not only the example, but an exercise. And I want you to do this exercise. I will start from the past knowledge. Africa check knows that the true population or true proportion of ghost profiles on Facebook is 0, 0,2. Suppose we take a sample of 200 Facebook profiles and found only 34 to be ghost profile. What is the probability that the proportion will be greater than 0, 0,17. Some of these things we used before, remember, in the other uh, uh, question that we were asked to find what is the population proportion and what is the sample proportion. We went then we said our population proportion, which is 0, 0.2, and our sample proportion was 0 0.17. Do you still remember that? I can go back two more steps. That's what that's what we we did because it's the same question. If you look at it, I'm lazy to calculate again the uh, pop, the sample proportion again. We've already calculated that. So we are asked to find the pro probability that your p is greater than 0, 0,17. From here, you can already start by saying 1 minus the probability of z less than and convert everything to a less than. Uh, you can do that or you can write it out and say this is the probability that z is greater than and I can write the formula which is your P minus your proportion, your population proportion divided by the standard error, which is the square root of one minus the population proportion divided by N. And from here, we can substitute into the formula. So we have all the values, Z, it's greater than our value is, what is our value? Our sample is 0, 0.17 minus our population is 0, 0.2 divided by Divide. But also, yeah, one thing I forgot to mention, also the sample proportion will always be given to you in the question as well. So you don't have to go and calculate it based on this information that is given. It will be given to you in the in the question. Uh, and here will be the square root of 0 0.2 times 1 minus 0 0.2 divide by our sample is 200. And you're going to go and calculate the answer and give me the answer when you have it. Otherwise, we can I can do it from here as well.
you also get the same answer. Nice. Otherwise, I'll also calculate it manually and see what we get. When one seven minus point two is zero, will be minus zero point zero three and some zeros. And the bottom part will be divided by the square root of, and I'm going to do the bottom part, it's 0.2 times 1 minus, or into bracket, 1 minus 0.2, close bracket, equals and I get 0 0.16 divide that by 200 and I get 0 comma 0 0 0 0 I'm not going to take the square root here I'm going to put the actual value I get 0 comma 0 0 0 8 and I take the square root which will be second function the square root of the answer, which gives me 0, 0, 28284. I need to write all the digits so that I don't round off quickly. Now I can take my minus 0 0.03 divide by 0 0.02. Eight two eight four, which is equals to the probability that Z is greater than minus. I need to only keep two decimals, so it will be minus zero. Uh, Minus one point zero six, and if I look at, I got the same when I was using the case. Now this is not the answer. I need to do one minus the probability I find on the table of z that less than minus one point. 0, 06. So we need to go to the table on the negative side. Go to the negative side. We need 1 minus 1, 0, 06. Right? So we need to find minus 1. And we need to go to the top and we'll find the last digit, 6. And they meet. And that is happy zero comma one four four six zero comma one four four six. Are we good? And that concludes me talking and you doing the work now. Just to recap on what we just did today, we looked at um, the sampling distribution for the mean. Always remember that your population mean is the same as your mean of the sampling distribution of means. Your standard error, which is also called the standard deviation of the sampling distributions of means, is given by your population standard deviation divided 
by the square root of n. In order for us to find the probability, we need to use the z-score, and the z-score for the sampling distribution of means is given by your z is equals to your sample mean minus the population sampled means divided by the standard error, which is your standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And remember always, when you find the probability of a z less than a value, that will be the probability you will find on the table. If you find the probability of z greater than a value, you will need to subtract 1 minus the value you will find on the table based on that probability of a less than. The probability of between, if z is between a and b, you first find the probability of z less than b and you subtract the probability of z less than a from it. We also looked at the sampling distributions of proportions. And we know that the mean of the sampling distribution of proportions is given by the population proportion, which is the pi, or the capital letter P. You are also required to be able to calculate the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of proportions, which is also called the standard error, which is given by the square root of your population proportion minus the population proportion divided by n. If we need to find the probability of a sampling distribution of the proportions, we use the formula z is equals to your sample proportion, which is always given to you in the question, your sample proportion minus your population proportion, whether it's a capital letter P or it's a pi, depending on which module you are using, divide that by the standard error, which is the square root of your population proportion times 1 minus the population proportion divided by n. Let's look at exercises. And I'm going to give you one minute to answer that question. If you know the answer, you can shout it out. You don't even have to calculate. Uh, so this is this Yes. The calculator, this casual which you are using, is it the smart one or is it the normal casual? It's the normal casual that you can buy from check out shop right game, pick and pay. I I yeah. have it with me here, but I'm struggling to get this answer which you you had, you have done there for the previous ex exercise. But did you put the the values correctly? That's the other thing. Yes, I yes I have done that. But where I'm struggling is that of p is greater than or, or p into z. That one, I don't know how to put it in the sub calculator. No, but you can't, you don't put this. You only put the value, you only do. Yes, I was putting only these values, but I, I don't get this answer. Okay. I don't know how to help you, but maybe probably we can connect after class so that I can show okay. you how to work on your calculator. Okay, so please. All right. Okay. What is the answer? What is the mean of a sampling distribution of the mean? You are asked to find the mean of the sampling distribution of the mean, and we know that is the same as the population. You don't have to calculate anything here. That should be easy and quick to answer. No one. 
That is 900, option one. It's 900 because it's given to you there in the statement. It's option one. Another error? We know that the standard error is calculated by that. The answer is 10, that is option three. Okay, how did you calculate that? I took the standard deviation, which is 100, and divided by the square root of the sample size, which is also 100, and then I got a 10. And which is option number three. Some of these things are easy and quick to calculate and answer. You just need to know the basic things. You just need to make sure that you are able to identify what is given in the question and substitute into the formula. <laughs> Suppose Matabo knows the, that the reading time of adults with ASD is normally distributed with the population mean and the standard deviation of 90 and 18 respectively. So therefore, this is our mean. And this is our standard deviation. If she selects a sample size of 30, which is our N, what is the probability that the average reading speed of an adult with ASD will be at least? So what is at least? will be at least 95 weight per minute. What is at least? At least is greater than or equal, right? So what they are asking you is to find the probability that your mean, sample mean, because this says the probability of those means of the average. Average is your sample mean is greater than or equal 95. Therefore, we can find 1 minus the probability of Z less than, and we substitute our Z value. Remember, our Z is given by your X mean minus your population divided by your standard error. And we can use that formula. So our 95 minus our population is 90 divided by standard deviation 18 divided by sample size square root of 8. One minus the probability. You can see that I'm saving time in terms of, or I'm making my life miserable by putting the one minus. But I will always remember that I need to subtract from one. Answer. I only need to keep two decimals, right? One comma five two. One minus. I need to go to the table to go find this probability on the table. And the probability on the table, we go to the positive side. 
and we're looking for 1,52. So 1,5 and 2. It's 0, 9357. 0, 9357. You see your answers on the chat if you did answer on the chat. Nobody has answered. One minus point nine three five seven is equals to zero comma. Zero six four three, and that's how you will answer the question. Are there any questions that you have? I'm gonna give you time now to answer some of this question on your on your own. We have more time. If there are no questions. Here is your first question. I'm going to give you five minutes. If you have an answer, you can type it on the chat and then we will do some feedback together. No answer on the chat. This should be the easiest and the quickest questions to answer. What is the sample proportion and what is the standard error? Remember, if they didn't give you the sample proportion, which is the P copy or your P, you can calculate it by using X over N, and your standard error will be the square root of your population proportion times 1 minus the population proportion divided by N, or you can use P, 1 minus your capital letter P divided by N. <coughs>
Are we done? Is it me? Okay. Okay, so based on the information given, a random sample of N of 100 people, 25 are classified as a meeting characteristic of interest that is success. Suppose the proportion of success is known to be 0 0.3, which means this is our pi and this is our x. So to find the p, x divided by n will be 25 divided by 100. Which is equals to 0 0.25, right? So coming here, therefore that is not correct. That is not correct. It leaves us with those two options. Number, the other one says we need to find the standard error, which is the standard error of the proportion will be given by population proportion, one minus the population proportion divided by N. Our population proportion is 0. Point, uh, sorry, the square root of 0. 0.3 times one minus 0. 0.3 divided by 100, which is equals to <clears throat> square root of 0.3 times 1 minus 0.3 close bracket divide by 100 which is equals to 0 0.458 if I keep it's 0 0.0458 0 0.0458 Eight and some number. This is zero three three. This is the correct one. Okay, can I give you some few minutes to answer the next one? Autism South Africa knows through population proportion of children with ASD in special needs school is zero comma seven four. That is uh, your population proportion. Assume that a sample size of 100, which is our N of ASD is selected. What is the probability that the sample proportion of children with ASD will be at least, which is greater than or equal? So they are asking you to calculate the probability that the sample proportion will be greater than or equal to 0, comma. Therefore, you need to go and find the probability of z greater than or equal to your sample proportion minus your population proportion. Remember, the sample proportion is always given in the question. Divide by the square root of your standard error, which is the square root of your population proportion. 1 minus the population proportion divide by n. I'm going to give you some few minutes and we will.
Are we winning? Still calculating. Are we done? Are we winning? Do we have an answer? That will be Z of greater than or equals to our P, which is 0, 0,7, which is given in the question minus our population proportion, which was 0, 0,74, divide by the square root of our sample, our standard error, which is 0, 0.74 times 1 minus 0, 0.74, divide by 100. Therefore, our P, Z will be greater than or equals to. I'm going to use this. 0.7 minus 0.74 divided by the square root of 0.74 times 1 minus 0.74 close bracket divide by 100 equals minus 0 0.9 is it 0 0.91 0 
we go to the table, go look for minus 0 0.5. N minus 0 0.91. That's what we're looking for. So we need to go to 0 0.9. And we're looking for 1 at the top, which is column number 2. 0 0.1848. But because this is the probability of a greater than, so we're going to say 1 minus the value we find on the table, 0, 0,1848, which will be equals to 1 minus 0 0.1848 equals. 0 0.8152, 0 0.8152, which is not on the list. This is one of those errors on this. Oh, Slizzy. Yes. It's actually option three. Why is it option three? What did I do? It your your last row there should be one minus zero point one eight one four. Did I type it wrong? Oh one four. Yes, I typed it wrong. So it's zero point one eight one four. I'm sorry. So we can just fix that. One minus point. One eight one four. Okay. Zero point one zero point eight one eight six eight six eight six, which is option three. Thank you. Next exercise. I a random selection of sixty four household was selected for a survey. The key question was asked, do you or any member of your household own a cell phone that you can use or access the internet? Of the 64 respondents, 32 said yes and 32 said no. The population proportion was known as 0 0.75. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? <laughs> okay, so let's evaluate each statement and see if it's correct so we can work out this one together right so we know that this is our population proportion and we know that there were 64 respondents therefore it means there are our n is 64. which one of the following statement is incorrect the sample proportion is 0 0.5 so what sample proportion we can take either the yes or the no so um at this point because they've got the same answers so they are both our x x is 32 for both of them so the sample proportion will be x divided by n therefore 32 divided by 64 be 0, 0,5. So that is correct. The standard error of the proportion is 0, 0,6, uh, 0, 0,062. Let's see if that is true. 
population proportion, one minus population proportion divided by N. We root off 0 0.75 times one minus 0 0.75. Divide by N of 64. And that is the square root of 0.75 times 1 minus 0.75 divided by 64 equals. 0 0.0541 0 0.054 which is not that and that is incorrect the standard error of the proportion is that the sample proportion is half which is the same as 0 0.15 um, because we can say 32 divided by 64. We say 32 goes one time into 32 and it goes two times into 64. The probability of proportion P is less than 0, 0, 0,05. So there we need to go find the probability of less than. So we need to go and calculate the probability that Z is less than 0 0.65 minus 0 0.75 divided by the standard error we did find it, it was 0 0.0541. And therefore, our probability that Z will be less than, we can go and calculate that. Let's go to the front of this table and say into bracket. Since I don't have my fraction thingy on, I'm just going to do 0 0.65 minus 0.75 and then go out and say divide and then press equal. And the answer is minus. 1.85 minus 1.85 and then I go to the table look for 1.8 and go to the top look for 5 when they both meet is 0 comma 322 0 comma 0 which is Correct, and that's how you will answer the questions. But in the exam, you would have already found your answer there, you stop. I'm gonna give you five minutes to answer that question. It looks like as if like all my questions are like proportion or there is the mean one. So Autism South Africa knows that the population proportion of children with ESD at schools is 0 0.74, therefore that is our population proportion. Assume a sample size of 100, that is our N, you need to go find the probability that, let's write it right here at the top, find the probability that the sample proportion lies between 0 0.7 and 0 0.84. You can go and find your Z lies between, um, since we know our formula is Z of proportion minus our P minus proportion divided by the square root of population proportion minus divide by n so we can just calculate it or substitute 0 0.7 minus our population proportion is 0 0.74 divide by the square root of 0 0.74 times 1 minus 0 0.74 
Let me rewrite that again. I shouldn't have write in the, the Z value first. Zero point seven minus zero point seven four divide by the square root of zero point seven four minus uh, not minus times one minus zero point seven four divide by our n, which is hundred. Zero point eight four minus zero point seven four divided by square root zero point seven four times one minus zero point seven four divided by hundred. Point seven four minus uh, point seven minus point seven four divided by the square root of point seven four times one minus point seven four close bracket go down hundred equal minus zero point nine nine one minus 0 0.91. Okay, go back. The only thing that changes is the first value, so I'll just scroll, scroll, scroll to the top. Delete, 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 and I need 0.84. And I press equal. The answer is 0 0.2 or oh, 2. Point. 2.7, 2 2.2, 2.28, 2.28. Therefore, you need to go and find the probability that Z lies between 2.28 minus the probability that Z lies between 0 0.91. Okay, we go to the table. 0 0.91, we know that it was 0 0.8114, right? That one we did. No. This is different. Is it? No, it's not different. It's 0 0.91. Yes. It was 0 0.814. I hope I'm going to write it correctly as well. 0 0.1814. And we need to go find on the positive side. Delete that. 2.28, 2.2, and we're looking for 8 at the top. So let's do that. See if we can find that. 0 0.9887. And that is 0 0.9887. Do the calculations there. Which will be 0 0.9887 minus 0 0.1814, which is equals to, unless if I've typed something wrong, 0. 8073. Did I type something wrong? Did I type wrong? Did I 
this one, I did everything to the latter. Oh, Slazy. Yes. For the probability of um, the Z is less than 2.28. I'm, yeah, no, no, that's all right. I see where you rounded it off. I think I was the one, I did the wrong calculation, sorry. No, that is Z of 2.28 is 0 0.9987. I didn't round off anything unless I'm standing on the right, the wrong color. Oh, you mean in terms of the answer of 2.28? Oh no, yeah, I rounded off because the answer here was 2.79 some number. So it will be 2.28. Um, what I see here, it seems as if like in that question, they would have said one of those, but that is not right. Um, so there is no answer on here. I will fix the slides as well. Uh, the answer is 0 0.8, 0 0 0.8073. I will fix the slides. One of these must go. Um, probably I will change that to 0 0.1814 and I will change that to 0 0.8073. So to make the, just give me a second that I can remember what to do. Take a screenshot of this. I will fix the slides and thank you. And upload the latest slides as well. Okay. Check what time is it? Okay, we still have 13 minutes or so. A diameter brand of a ping, bo ping balls is approximately uh, normally di distributed with a mean of 1.3 and a standard deviation of 0 0.8. If a random sample of four ping pong balls were selected, the mean and standard deviation of the distribution of the mean are in respect to that. So remember, the question is asking you to find the mean and the standard deviation. Should be easy to calculate and find since we are told what the mean is and what the standard deviation is. Do we have the answers? What is the mean? The mean is 1.31. 1.31 and what is the standard deviation? We substitute 0 0.08 divided by the square root of, did they give us? It's four. A sample of four, yes, they did. I forgot to. Do that and is four. 
And the answer here is. Zero point zero four. Because the square root of four is two. Zero point zero eight divided by two will give you zero point zero four. So the answer is option four. Using the same information, you are asked to find the probability. So let's go find the 1.3 and 0 0.4. So we know that our mean is 1.3. Our standard error, we did calculate it. You don't have to calculate it again, is 0 0.04. So what they are asking you is to find the probability that your sample mean is less than 1.28. Therefore, you just need to calculate Z of less than 1.28 minus 1.3 divide by your standard error of 0, 0,04. Remember, Z is your sample mean minus the population divide by the standard error. Uh -huh. Sample mean minus the population mean divided by standard deviation over the square root of n. It's one and the same formula. So what I'm doing is I'm using this shortcut one. So therefore your p will be that of less than. What is the answer? It's minus 0.75. Minus 0 0.75. So we need to go to the table. Minus 0 0.75. We go to the positive side of the table. Oh, sorry, negative side of the table. We look for minus 0 0.75. So minus 0 0.7. And we look for 5 at the top. Where they both meet, that is where they meet. It's zero point two two six six. See if it's there. Zero point two two six six. Okay, the last question is on the standard error of its sampling distribution. So you're given standard deviation, you're given the, the mean and the sample size. Uh, so this 1000 is going to throw you off and confuse you, but because they say A, Population is normally distribution distributed with the population of a thousand observation. This is our capital letter N, which is the sample size, uh, not it, the population size. All right. That has nothing to do with any of the calculations, so you can ignore. Ignore. Has the mean of a hundred, so they, they give us the mean and the standard deviation of 10 and the sample size, which is what we need to be using, is randomly distributed, uh, is randomly drawn from the population. What is the standard error? And we know that a standard error is your population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Do we have an answer? That's option two. That will be 10 divided by the square root of 200, which will be given by, which will be equals to 
are you saying it's zero comma seven zero seven? Yes, Oslis. Yeah. We have five minutes. Let's see. I'm not going to ask you to answer this in five minutes because it's the probability of between. It will take you time, but you can take a screenshot of it and see if you are able to answer the question. Oh, then in the next five minutes, you can answer this question. I'll give you time. Since that is the last question we have. Are we winning? Are we winning? Not okay. So I've already wrote the formula. I've substituted into the formula. We know what the formula for the Z score looks like. And for the first one, the answer is 0 0.5. And I'll just put a zero at the end because I need to keep two decimals. So remember your Z is your sample mean minus the population mean divided by the standard error, which is the square root, the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Calculating the other side, I'm just gonna use the same. It's the only thing I need to remove is 70 and I just do delete and I put the one, 71.2. Five and I press equal. 
and the answer is 1.5. 1.5. We know we need to go find the probability that Z is less than 1.50 minus the probability that Z is less than 0 0.50. So you go to the table. Let's first find the probability of 1.5. 1. So 1.50, it's on the positive side. So we go to the positive and we look for 1.5 and we know the first column will be the zero. So the answer is 0 0.9332. 0 0.9332 minus. Next one. Uh, 0 0.5. It's also in the positive, and we need to go to 0 0.50, because 0 is at the top, it's 0 0.6915. 0 0.6915. And the answer we are looking for is 0.9332 minus 0.6915 and equals and is option number four which is 0 0.24117 they here it says one six so also here yeah, there is a mistake there We'll fix that. One seven. And that concludes today's session. Are there any questions? Any comments? Any query? Any? In the absence Hello, of such, Susan. yes. Uh, if you can do the same with uh, regard to attendance register like last week, because I just uh, log in as an guest, I tried yeah. to log uh, in with my units. Yeah. Sorry. On the on the WhatsApp group, it will still be there. You can just click the same link that was posted there. Okay. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Please remember as well to please complete the register before you leave today. Other than that, I will keep you posted on the WhatsApp in terms of when our next session will be. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday and I will see you in July. Thank Enjoy you. your Saturday as well and the, the whole weekend, is Lizzie. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is Omega Mega Nanayo in Escosa. Now, this, uh, because on the that page which you talked about, 770, I don't have it in my study guide. It's end at two something. Okay. So I will need to check again. All right. No problem. Yes, yes, yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Maybe if any one of the, my colleagues can assist.